thank you for joining us today. And, uh, could you please give us some of your thoughts and highlights of the major technology trends at OFC 24? Yeah, I think um, most of um, uh, what's going to be shown is going to be around uh, 800 gig and the transition and what's going to be needed for 1.6 terabits in the future. I think that um, particularly with the um, explosion of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, what, what we're seeing is, and I think this is going to be very key for the industry as a whole, is how's the supply chain going to cope with the volume of uh, optical interconnects that's going to be needed? I mean, there, there obviously is a lot of hype on artificial intelligence, but latest market research shows that you know, the number of ports in the next few years of 800 gig and above is going to be um, uh, huge. And that, that really is driven by the fact that artificial intelligence um, bandwidth is going to increase um, 10 times in the next two years um, from, a, from a volume perspective as well. Uh, and if you just look at the front end data center, which we all know and have been dealing with for the last um, 10, 15 years, that's only growing at uh, two times uh, in, in the next two years, according to latest market uh, analyst reports. So from that perspective, um, it's is the supply chain robust enough? And that's some of the work that we've been doing. We made an announcement yesterday of a strategic partnership with Jabil. And, and really that's around uh, being able to um, bring silicon photonics really to the mainstream as a manufacturable product. And uh, Jabil obviously has a lot of experience in, in high volume manufacturing from uh, components all the way through to system level type of products. And so that's one of the ways that we're trying to uh, support the industry, not only from a, a, a data comm and AI point of view, but across other market segments as well. And, and for us, really, the, the main aim is that when we deliver wafers from our foundry partner, Tower, is what do customers do with those wafers at that point? And where Jabel's expertise will come in is they will take uh, the wafers and they will uh, put them into optical sub-assemblies, depending on what the customer wants, and they'll be able to do that at scale. And where we right. help, we bring in our test and our reliability experience uh, from uh, the optical uh, integration point of view. All right. So um, in the transition to 400 gig, uh, things maybe didn't go as smoothly as some of the pundits had predicted at the beginning. Uh, do you see the 800 gig transition coming along? Well, I think um, a little bit better. Yeah, I think that uh, 400 gig, particularly because it was 100 gig electrical interfaces, um, there was a lot of um, issues around um, how the system interfaced everything together which meant the DSP, the optics, and, and, and the high-end chips that sit behind it. And a lot of work had to go into that uh, from a signal integrity point of view, from a firmware point of view, to enable uh, optically compliant links at 400 gig. I think what you've seen and what we're seeing is that, that from my experience, that took uh, some of the bigger companies one to two years to get that all uh, resolved. I think what's happening is uh, 800 gig is starting earlier because um, because of the same issues, because you've doubled the number of channels basically at 100 gig. But I think as we go to 200 gig, people are starting that early because the way that all this interoperates with each other at 200 gig, that's going to be an even bigger challenge. So I think that's why you're seeing uh, a lot of hype on 1.6 right now, because that work has to be done. And that will take time before you can start deploying systems in, in, in mass volume. And how about with the lasers, EMLs, or VIXELs? Um, so from a VIXEL point of view, I think that 200 gig uh, VIXELs are a very 
a big technology challenge. I don't, I don't think anybody would deny that if you talk to most of the Vixel manufacturers. I think EMLs, um, yep, there are some very good EMLs out there. The issue is, is can EMLs at 200 gig meet the, the requirements from a volume perspective? And then if you look at the way the industry has traditionally built uh, pluggable modules, I think what you'll see is that, um, you know, the yields are going to be low initially, which then puts even extra pressure on, are there enough EMLs in the world? So I think that, um, you know, if you talk to some of the bigger players, particularly in the AI space, they'll tell you that one of the concerns they have is can they get a diverse supply chain, which would enable, um, you know, them to get the volume that they have. And, you know, from discussions that we've been having and that what we're hearing in the industry, 800 gig is a challenge to get the volume that you need. Mm -hmm. And that's where coming in with some different technologies using different architectures and things like that could enable you to diversify that supply chain somewhat as well. Okay, and uh, one more question on the supply side then. Uh, of course, there's a lot of government funding coming along. Um, is that going to impact this segment of the market in, in any you know significant way in the next few years? Um, I, I think so. I think most of the foundries, a lot of companies have gone in to go, particularly from the U.S. government's CHIPS Act. Um, I think this is going to be a key technology in the future whether or not you put heterogeneous integration in or not. Um, and I think that um, what we're going to see as we go on is that uh, more and more foundries will come on to, to look at uh, deploying uh, more silicon photonics. I, I think the, the other thing that is also a very major trend in the industry, and there was... Um, there was an announcement, I think, overnight that, uh, you know, the uh, LPO MSA has been formed. And I think right. that's also going to be a very hot topic at OFC this year. It was last year. I think it'll be hotter now. Yes. Um, and mainly because there's a lot of work that has to be done to enable interoperability uh, between different manufacturers' models, uh, modules, sorry. And 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 the the reason for that is is you're dealing with a completely different electrical interface uh, coming out of the pluggable because uh, it's going to be more analog than digital because they've right. removed all components from the module and and you know we we did that at ten gigabits and mm. that was a hard problem to solve so you can imagine what it's going to be like when you're dealing with a uh, 100 gigabit type and 200 gigabit type interfaces. So that exactly. works what to be done and it's going to take a little while to do. Do, do you know is that on the receive side or on the transmit side or both? It's going to be on both. Yeah. Okay, interesting. One, one final question and that's 1.6T. Um, any any uh, observations on where we're headed next with that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, what you're going to see is 200 gig lanes. Um, uh, so you'll see that most of the merchant IC suppliers who supply DSPs and, um, and, and the analog electronics will all be dealing with the transition from 100 gig IO to 200 gig. I think you have to go in that direction to minimize the amount of, uh, obviously, optics that are in, in, in a pluggable module and to be able to fit in the form factors that are available today. So I think you'll see a lot of that at the show, uh, particularly from the merchant suppliers. I mean, we're doing demos at the show uh, with uh, Synopsys with their 200 gig uh, Surdies. In fact, it's like an LPO type uh, demonstration uh, using our um, 200 gig EML, uh, or sorry, our 200 gig EA modulator that's inside uh, a silicon pick, and that's married up uh, to uh, the Synopsys 224 gigabit uh, Surdies. So that'll be on their booth being demoed. And then I think that um, 
what we'll see is that uh, there'll be a lot more drive to that 200 gig interface as we as we go through time. And you can imagine what we're going to have to be doing when, when we go to the next speed above 1.6 terabit. All right. Well, fantastic. Looking forward to seeing you at, at OFC 2024. The same to you. Thank you.